What's going on guys? Today we are back with another video. It is a gorgeous late fall day. It's cold. It's like 25 degrees, but it's not blowing crazy yet. So we're going to be catching some walleyes out here today. I'm excited. It's end times, very cold out, and uh, it's been cold. But the first thing I want to talk about before we get going here, you guys have been asking for it, is some like boat maintenance when it's cold like this and what you can do at the ramp to keep fishing this time of year. There's a few things I always bring. One is a shovel to the ramp this time of year. The other one is salt and sand. So you can either shovel that ramp out and drop salt and sand if you, if you have to do it to get out. Um, you know, or a lot of times, you know, if that ramp is frozen, um, if there's ice on the ramp and you're worried about, you know, backing down, you know, salt's obviously works wonders. So those are kind of the two main things I bring. The other big public service announcement this time of year when you have temps that are always below freezing is when you back your boat in and you, lo and you launch your boat, your boat's in the water, and you pull your trailer out let the trailer sit in the water keep those tires like right at in the barely in the water and let that trailer drain otherwise if you just go whipping on out of there what's going to happen is you're going to push a ton of water up onto that ramp it's going to freeze and then the next guy or when you go to pull your boat out is going to deal with an icy ramp so pull out very slow let that trailer drain and once it's just barely dropping water, pull all the way out. Big public service announcement there. If you do this a lot, you probably already know this stuff. But uh, yeah, good good point of advice right there. Um, and the other one is kind of with your boat. Obviously, if you can put your boat in a heated garage at night, that goes a long way. Most time, as long as it's in the water, I mean, it'd have to be super cold. But as long as your boat's in the water and running, you're not going to have anything freezing in the motor. But if you get to the lake and you turn your boat on and uh, it's not peeing, just let it sit there and idle until it starts, right? Um, otherwise, you're going to end up heating up your motor too much and there's ice somewhere in there. Most time, just sitting at idle, it's not doing any damage and it's eventually just going to work that ice out just because the motor's warming up and you're going to be good to go. Um, the other thing is, right when I pull out, one thing I'll do, I'll just trim the motor all the way down, make sure all the water runs out of it, and I'll just start it for a second. And that's just going to go, poof, you're going to see a burst of just spray water come out and turn it off right away, right? Just to make sure everything in that line is clear, right? And then you're not going to have any problems launching the next day. So those are kind of a couple of the big, big things. And uh, kind of the only other thing that I'll do sometimes if it's really cold out, um, if you have a little bit of water sitting in the bottom of your boat, either in the bilge or something like that, you don't want that freezing. So one thing I'll do, I'll just bring a little bit of antifreeze, dump it in the bottom of my boat, just so it just, most time your bilge pump is at the lowest point in most boats. And uh, it's just enough to sit on that pump and uh, keep it from freezing. And then when I just get home, I'll just pull the plug and drain it out. And uh, super simple, a couple things I do to keep fishing this time of year. It's very easy to come out and fish this time of year. Just keep those couple things in mind, you'll be good to go. So with that said, we're gonna blast off. Me and Surly are gonna go catch some walleyes today. Stay tuned, let's get it done. All right, potential spot number one. I'll tell you the best thing about fall, nobody is on the lakes or fishing. I'm gonna drop my trumler down here, which is always a good tip when you likely know where fish are and uh, are gonna scan some stuff and you can just spot lock right when you see them. It's actually windier than I thought it was gonna be out here, but that's that is all right. That is fall fishing, I guess, right? Kind of going to be fishing a, a shallow sand weed flat here, just a extension off off a shore. And uh, the fish have kind of been in like six to six to ten feet. And one thing I already like is the wind blowing straight into it is always a bonus when you're fishing shallow fish in the fall and maybe the big thing people don't realize who watch the videos you probably think i'm just coming to like the same waypoints every day when in reality what it is most of the time is that there's large spots that'll always hold the fish at certain times of year and you end up finding them on that larger spot every day you know, most lakes will have like four or five of these kind of spots that are just productive at certain times of year. You know, maybe in the summer it's deep rock, maybe in the fall it's shallow weeds, maybe in the spring it's sand flats. And what you end up doing is basically something like this every day is going to those big spots, driving around them and looking. It's not like just come out, park on a spot and start fishing. 
and honestly we're still not really seeing a lot they might be on the inside edge i am only looking at the outside edge right now all right so there's some all right so this right here is what i'm looking for oh yeah all right i'm gonna take a screenshot for you guys i so i just saw him off my right hand side right so i'm just gonna keep putting a little more right about there i'd say and you guys have seen it many times kalen's google i jig quarter ounce gold larger minnow and i hate to call a shot but this should be pretty much a fish on this cast here to get my net out i'm just that confident as long as they're biting i'll say if they're biting i should catch a fish Oh, look at that right there. <laughs> and fish on first cast. I was actually just messing with my gloves so you guys could see off my chest mount. And look at that. Right on cue, first cast walleye here. Anybody who doesn't like fall walleye fishing probably has not done enough of it yet. Here's not a big one. There we go. First cast. Nice little 16, 17 incher. How are you gonna beat it? Only guy on the lake and catching fish there we go check that out beautiful walleye right there that's what we're out here for we'll get bigger ones than that but hey first cast can't complain too much right Right there, right next to the boat. It's smally. He even bit really soft. It's all right, we'll take it. Just looking at that pot of fish out there. Whenever I see him come through, I'm kind of pitching at him. And there we go, nice smally. The boat is in nine feet right now. Not super big, but I'm gonna net him so I don't get my hands wet. That is one of my favorite parts of fall right there. Catching both these fish way up shallow, same kind of spots. Fall is just such a cool time. Just a cute little guy. He's got the right build though for a 16, 17 incher. He's gonna be a big in one day. Let's throw him back. So one tip that I use a lot when the water is just brutally cold like this, when you start getting temps that are like low 40s, upper 30s, and you're dealing with really finicky fish, and a lot of times it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing, and uh, you know, especially when I pitch in shallow, um, is go down in jig size. That's kind of the first tip. Go even slower. So if you're fishing like a quarter in like 10, 12 feet, go to an eight and fish a little bit slower. If you're fishing deep and using like a three eighths or half, go to a quarter and fish very slow. Um, so you kind of go down in jig size. And then one thing you can do to give, and the whole idea here is to give your bait more motion at an incredibly slow speed, right? So we're gonna grab a minnow out here. And that's what we're using is just larger minnows here. And most of the time what I'll do is I'll put the hook right in the mouth and up through the skull. It stays on incredibly well and I'm not that worried about uh, um, imparting the action or, or the minnow being alive just because I'm imparting all the action. Well, when you go down at a jig size here, one thing I'll do is I'll just take and lip hook them like this. Now what you're gonna have is a very lively minnow on here right and basically i'll change my jig cadence up a little bit now one tip you definitely want to be fishing with a softer rod and you can't cast super hard when you're doing this but basically i'll get the bait out there i'm just lobbing it out there i'm going all the way down to bottom now most of the time you guys see me jig i'm doing this pop i'm popping the jig up letting it fall pop popping the jig up letting it fall when i'm fishing this way and one thing you notice a lot is you'll start getting a lot of bites right off the bottom and I'll just take, and instead of doing that jig pop, I'll just kind of reel it really slow like that and then stop it. All that thing's doing is that minnow's coming up, it's just kind of kicking, 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 and then it'll just sit on the bottom, kind of wiggling. Then I'll do the same thing, I'll just kind of reel it a little bit and let it sit on bottom. With that lighter jig, you get a lot more movement out of that minnow. He's gonna be able to kick that jig around a little bit down there. And, you know, just reeling it this slow, the thing has a lot of hang time because it is so light, and that whole time that minnow is just kind of kicking around and twitching on the end of that thing because he's still alive. 
most of the time when you're doing this, your bites you're, you're gonna feel, you're just gonna go to reel up again, there's gonna be real mush weight on there. Very rarely will you be reeling it and just feel like, you know, a real hard bite. Most of the time what's gonna happen is they're gonna see that thing kind of going, 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 it's gonna fall down to bottom and they're just gonna pick it up, right? And this is one way when the water gets really cold and you're struggling to get bites, that'll keep you getting bites. And you can see, I mean, you get a fair amount of casts out of them. I mean, you can still see this guy is plenty lively. He's not really playing much for the camera right now, but you put him in the water and he's still kicking all around, swimming, looking very lifelike and natural. And this is just one of those tips that you can sometimes use on days where it's real tough when you're dealing with super cold water temps like we are today, pretty much 41 and lower out here today. Oh yeah, that's a fish right there. Super soft pickup on that one. There we go. We're hooked up, Surly. I think we got, oh yeah. Definitely the right kind of fish here. About a 17 inch walleye. Way up shallow. There we go. What do you think? Yeah, look at that. Super soft. And one thing you notice, kind of the colder and colder and colder it gets is that more and more and more of these fish start picking it up off the bottom and you don't get that typical jig thump uh, like you do when they're swatting it as it's falling. And especially when the water is 41 degrees, they might not always pop it on the way down, but there we go. If you're keeping them, that's about the perfect keeping size right there. Way up shallow, pitching jigs, catching them. How can you not like it? Only guy probably on a lake anywhere around here right now. Look at that, beautiful. Let's let that little guy go. Oh, look at that. What do we have here? I kind of doubt this is a walleye. What is it, or is it a walleye? No, it's another pike. Little bit of everything up here. He was angry. <laughs> Just saw that little pot on side imaging. Pitched out to him and of course the big pike bites first. Loosen my drag here so it doesn't make a massive run and snap me off. Here buddy. There we go. Decent pike though. Oh look at that surly. Late fall pike. We'll take it, I guess. They're all fun this time of year. We're on the board with a very mixed bag of species. See you later, dude. So one thing you guys have been asking for a lot in the comments section regarding this late fall fishing stuff is how do you keep your hands warm, good glove option, stuff like that. Well, being that I've ice fished and open water fished late in the year, my entire life, um, there's kind of a system I like using which definitely works the best for me. The problem with wearing gloves when you're fishing is you need something light enough to fish with, yet something heavy enough to keep your hands warm, right? And basically the same thing I do for ice fishing or open water or whenever it's really cold out and I need something is the first thing I put on is fingerless wool gloves. And I'll go ahead and link all this stuff down below. These are the Sims fingerless wool gloves. Um, wool keeps your hands very warm even when they're wet and wool gloves are just flat out warm. So a pair of wool fingerless gloves, you can fish really well in fingerless gloves and they're enough to keep your hands warm when you're fishing. The other thing I do, is bring heavy mitts. These are nice if your hands get really cold and you need to warm them up quick, if you're running in the boat, if you're doing anything that's not super hands-on, super sensitive fishing. And a lot of times when it's really cold, I'll wear my left glove because all I need to do with my left glove is just simply reel and I'll keep my right glove off um, for the actual fishing part, right? So I still get really, you know, a lot of sensitivity. I'm not wearing that huge glove. I can feel a lot still through the rod just with the fingerless glove on. So obviously if it's super cold out and you want to get mitts that are bigger than your, you know, the size you normally wear. If you normally wear a large, go with the extra large. Just because you're going to be putting a wool fingerless glove inside here as well, right? And now the only other thing I do is I put, I take and I put the heater packs inside my gloves, right? Inside my mitts. So this is super easy. You can kind of lay these down on the boat anywhere. If your hands get cold, just pop your mitts back on. Um, so it's kind of three pieces, obviously. The wool fingerless glove, the bigger mitt when you're not fishing, and then the hand warmer. Most of the time when I'm fishing, unless it's just brutally cold, 
I can get by without having to wear um, the heavy gloves. But if you do, like I said, you can just throw the heavy gloves on. So ice fish in open water, that's kind of what I do to keep my hands warm and still be fishable. Two sets of gloves at the same time, and uh, it works for me, and I'm sure it'll probably work for you. Oh, there's a bite right next to the boat. Right there. Oh, oh, fish on, and look at that. Angry shallow water walleyes. I love it, look at that guy go. So cool catching him up shallow. Set the hook, fish is pretty much on the surface. Just head shaking and thrashing and rolling. That is what we're after right there. Too cool up in the weeds just in a bald spot here on a big weed flat man look at that surly that is what we are after right there a little google eye jig 41 degrees he whacked it pretty good not a big one there but we'll take him like that all day long too cool let's let that guy go see you later buddy all right guys well that is going to do it for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this i know surly come here surly sit in your chair come on come on sit down i know surly is not very excited with this weather it is like starting to rain now it's cold enough to be snow it's like a nice balmy 29 degree rain out here today uh, but i'm gonna go home drop this footage off come back out try to film something else when the rain stops which is supposed to in a couple hours but surly does not like the cold and the wetness very much uh, but i appreciate you guys watching hopefully this video was informa informational for you guys just a quick little hour hour and a half long outing here jigging some walleyes, jigging a pike, some smallmouth, a little bit of everything. I caught, even caught some largemouth uh, that I'm not going to put in this video, but pitching shallow water is super fun. One of my absolute favorite, favorite things to do. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. It looks like, I don't even want to jinx it, but we have a warm-up coming. And uh, it looks like it's going to be some decent, believe it or not, conditions um, for some November fishing from a boat still. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you guys next time.